Travel Research Online is pleased to be bringing you this No Limits webinar today, Sales Success in 30 Days or Less. And we are here with the wealthy travel agent, Dan Chappelle. Dan is a columnist with TRO. So if you haven't ever read one of his columns, we encourage you to do that over on our website. Dan is also an author, and he is the author of the book, Get Your Ship together. <laughs> it's a great book and if you haven't um, looked for that, I do encourage you to go look out for that on um, Amazon. But Dan has a ton of experience in the travel industry. He started out um, with a focus on sales. He owned his own agency and then um, moved from there into the more corporate side of the travel industry. He was a vice president of Worldwide sales at Windstar Cruises. He was the VP of operations at Expedia Cruise Ship Centers. He was the director of franchise relations at Cruise Holidays, which is, uh, of course, travel leaders. And so he comes at, um, into the industry from a very unique perspective of having the retail sales background as well as the supplier side. And so all of this together, um, gives him the ability to really share some sales tips and secrets with us that he's learned through his years in the industry. So, Dan, we're just delighted to have you here with us. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Fantastic. Thank you, Lee. I really appreciate it. And I want to thank everyone for, for taking the time out of your day to, to spend with us today. Hopefully, uh, this will help you tee up uh, wave season coming in. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, we're actually finishing up Q1 of, uh, of the sales year. Uh, the sales year for, <clears throat> excuse me, for the travel industry pretty much starts September 1 uh, through August 1st because everything that you're booking pretty much from now, from then to uh, the end of the year, sales in the following year. And of course, we're, we're tracked on sales revenue and, and traveled revenue and stuff like that from a from a supplier perspective. So uh, this, but wave season coming up uh, is really going to be, a, it should be a strong booking season for everyone. And I want to make sure that you're teed up for that, that you have the resources that you need and that uh, you, you've got your head in the right place mindset to be able to do this. So, you know, I do these uh, webinars for TRO every quarter or so. And, uh, you know, something, uh, you know, happened in about a month ago that uh, really kind of got me, you know, thinking that uh, I need to I, I need to address something that's uh, um, probably a hot potato in this industry. But uh, I was looking at I, I usually what I do is I, I look at Facebook groups and a lot of you are members of that. And I was looking at one. It's one of the larger ones. And uh, it's it's actually run by a, a host agency. And um, but the, there was an, an advisor in there, and I say it's a new advisor because it's someone who's been in the industry for you know at least six months or so. But she was complaining that you know she'd been in for six months and hadn't hadn't gotten her sale yet. And the problem with that was she was she was blaming her host agency for the failure. Now I kind of get that uh, because uh, somebody pointed out in a in a response to a column I wrote about this. Somebody pointed out that you know a lot of these host agencies will kind of promise you the moon. And then, you know, once you sign on the dotted line, you're like, you know, Cinderella's, uh, uh, you turn into a pumpkin like Cinderella's uh, uh, chariot or uh, her, her carriage. And, you know, then you're on your own to kind of do what you, you need to do on your own from there. They've got resources available, but, you know, the, their big thing is to get you in first and then go on. Well, in my experience, the first 30 days that you sign in, or if you're already an experienced agent or advisor in the industry and you're struggling to get along, you know, you, you need to set a 30 day plan to get yourself going and, and get the get the momentum uh, built up there. So the, what I was really curious about, though, was more more than 100 people had commented before they took the post down, but more than 100 people had actually commented about how they struggled. You know how they struggled re regularly. There was a few that said, you know, we it took more than six months to get our first sale, and I was just, I was like, I couldn't believe that because, you know, it's not hard. And you know, I, I got to thinking about. It. I said, you know, the really the the fact of the matter is, most of us get into the industry because we do what we like to travel and we like to take care of people. We don't get in it to sell anything necessarily. So a lot of them were blaming their hosts and their consortia, but most of them blame the marketing that's out there. Now, one of the things that you got to understand is what the role is of the host and of the consortia. Yeah, they give you, you know, 
commissions on on tiers or higher commissions and and of course that in itself is is, an, is something to to strive for and you have to you know the more you sell typically the more you make uh, but their main role there is to offer operational support and marketing support. They have professionals that put these marketing pieces together and the, the, um, the, the cruise lines and the tour companies and the hotels, they pay. And you know what, if they didn't work, they wouldn't pay. Uh, so I encourage you, if you're not using those marketing pieces, I need, I'm gonna encourage you to use them. However, you gotta be very targeted about how you, you do that. So most of them are blaming their, their consortium or hosts, or most of them are blaming the marketing that they had. But you know, you really have to ask the question, why? Why, why is it that they put so much of that blame on, on, the, uh, on those organizations? And, you know, frankly, I, I, I don't get it because, you know, I take responsibility for it, for, for my own actions. You know, if it's your company, you, you're responsible for that. But, you know, I get that a lot of promises and a lot of hype is built up. And the reason is, as an industry, we have this philosophy of if you build it, they will come. So essentially, when you sign up with a with a host agency or consortium, you kind of get a business in a box with a lot of them. And a lot of it has to do with the marketing and your CRM and all of that kind of good stuff. And you've got all that built and you do all that marketing and they're just the customers are just going to come to you. They're just going to walk in the door. They're just going to email you, just going to pick up the phone and call you. And the reality of it is we know that's not what happens, because unfortunately, in our industry, Marketing has become synonymous with selling. And while uh, they are both very tightly related, they are also very separate and very different disciplines. And when you look at a lot of these organizations, they drive the marketing, which is supposed to you click on this and people are going to go to that and they're going to buy. Well, we're a people to people business. So, so you're going to have to either have a conversation of some sort with them typically to, to make that sale. Cause we're not in the air car hotel business. You know, that's, that's an easy transactional thing. We're in the vacation business. So it's, it's a lot different there. Now uh, we're going to talk about selling today and you know, there is, I don't want to, you know, beat up marketing too much marketing. There's a very important role of marketing. Marketing's sole purpose is to support your sales efforts. Purely, that's it. You know, everyone talks about marketing. All the, all the, my peers as, as uh, coaches in the industry, the executives, they all talk about marketing, 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 marketing. The fact of the matter is, you don't get paid to market anything. You get paid to sell. So we're going to talk about selling today and how to really jumpstart your sales and get yourself in the, in a place where you can really uh, make some money. And, and that's the, that's the name of the game. You, you know, the more you, once you get the momentum going, then you know, you'll start to see the results that you really hope for once you got into the business. So as a salesperson, you, you need to get your ship together. You know, and it's the title of my book. It's it's what 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 we the focus of what we start off. But one of the things I noticed when in the conversation of uh, on that Facebook post was they didn't have the skills to be able to actually do the job of selling travel. Okay, I don't know why they got into it, but they, they, it was very evident that most of the people posting ha had no idea what to do. So getting your ship together is key. And ship stands for skills, uh, habits, inspiration, you know, the why. Why are you doing this in the first place? Something's got to drive you to do it. And then P is for performance. So we want to get our ship together, make sure we have the skill sets, that our habits are good, we're inspired to show up and do it every day, and that we're, we're measuring the right things. But there's four questions that you need to answer for yourself outside of that. The first is what is your brand, okay? Branding is, is very important. And when I say branding, I don't mean big logos and stuff like that. I'm talking about what do you wanna be known for? What is it that's unique about you that's going to help people make a decision to buy from you? You know, there's over 100,000 travel professionals in North America alone. OK, and we all sell basically the same thing. Right. So what are you selling is the next question, because if you're trying to sell everything to all people, well, you're going to be just like everybody else. And there's nothing to differentiate and there's no reason why anybody should buy from you. So you want to establish what your brand is. And we're going to talk more detail about that here in just a second. But what is it that you're selling? You know, specific products are you selling? What are you specializing in? OK, is it product destination? What is it? Figure out what that is. You also need to know who your customers are. 
Now we talk about ideal customers and being specific about who you're going for. And it's key to do that because when we're talking about selling, you know, it's a proactive process. So with marketing, it's a reactive. You're putting something out there and you're waiting for someone to re contact you. Whereas selling, you're reaching out and being proactive and going after the specific people you want to do business with. And that's key because that's where the profitability is. You're not wasting time with, with the, the looky loos and the tire kickers and all that kind of stuff. You want to be very specific about who they are. But more importantly, this is the key question and you've got to answer this for yourself, is why should they buy from you? What is it about you that differentiates you from all the other 100,000 plus travel professionals in North America? Why should they buy from you? Okay, if I'm, if I'm shopping for a trip, why should I buy from you versus everybody else? And I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on these four questions here as we go in here. So let's talk about branding. So Fast Company is a great magazine. If, you, if you've never seen it, uh, I suggest you pick it up. This is actually, I still have this copy, believe it or not, of Fast Company from 1997. And it's called, you see Netscape up there, which doesn't exist. But the brand called you. This is when the, the independent contractor uh, phase really started kicking in in a lot of industries. And, you know, people needed to differentiate themselves from, from, a, from a job perspective. So if you're searching for, for a, an employer, you know, what is it that sets you apart? So we really focus on the brand called you. What is it about you that people want? Now, we're in the personal service business. And these are some brands you, you may know. I mean, if you're in Texas, you probably know Ron and Kathy Matthews. Uh, if you read Travel and Leisure or any of the others, you probably have heard of Betty McLean Travel, Valerie Wilson Travel, okay? Well, these are all people, okay? Uh, Betty McLean Travel, Valerie Wilson Travel, you know, Marianne Ramsey is the owner of Betty McLean Travel. So when you, where I'm going with this is, and you see that these are people. The brand is the person. The brand is the person. It's not uh, XYZ Travel. Okay, nobody remembers XYZ Travel or ABC Travel or anything like that, but they remember uh, Ronnie and Kathy Matthews is who they bought their house from or listed their house from, or they know that they bought their trip from uh, Valerie Wilson or Kimberly Wilson at, at Valerie Wilson Travel. So it's the person first. Think about how real estate uh, agents market themselves. It's them. Their, themselves, their brand, whether it's the Matthews team or Ronnie and Kathy Matthews or Ronnie Matthews, it's the team, it's them, they, they are the brand followed up by who they're affiliated with. In, this, in the case of a lot of these, it's with Virtuoso or Signature, stuff like that. There's actually six brands up here that you're looking at. We also have Rick Steves. We all know who Rick Steves is, right? Okay, it used to be Beyond the, behind the back, uh, Europe by the back door, sort of, I can't remember what it was. Well, that didn't really do well, but Rick Steves is the brand. Mark Allen, you look at hair salons, same type thing. Mark Allen is a, is a big hair salon here in uh, where I live. Okay, There's 50 stylists that work there, but when they put out their business card, it's, uh, it's Jane Doe, professional stylist at Mark Allen Travel. People recognize the Mark Allen brand, the Valerie Wilson brand, the Betty McLean brand, and what they stand for, because they're, they're people. People like to do business with people as opposed to companies. So my suggestion for you here is don't worry about building out this big corporate looking, you know, logo and brand and stuff like that. Make it about you. You're the brand. You know, the brand is you. Rick Steves doesn't sell with to travel agents, but I can tell you he does a fantastic job. I know people who have been there. Doesn't really do any advertising or marketing other than his show on PBS is considered marketing. So a lot of stuff is there, but people identify with the brand. What's the sixth brand that you see up there? DanChappelle.com. Okay. You know me as the wealthy travel agent, but it's danchappelle.com is, is who I am. It's what I'm all about. And that's the website in, that you can go to. Now, I'm going to make a suggestion is if you can get yourname.com, and I got danchappelle.com 20 years ago or 30, 25 years ago, because there's a couple of us out there, uh, try to get yourname.com. And if you can't get yourname.com, get yournametravel.com or .net. Something that's easy to remember, because if you think about it, when you, you read, you know, who are the top travel professionals uh, for any given destination or product in Condé Nast or Travel and Leisure, it's 
they it's very similar to the way that the the industry the uh, real estate industry does it's the agent it's the agent that is given or the advisor that is that they identify as the top professional that's the brand people are going to want that particular agent doesn't matter where they're affiliated with or who they who they are the brand they are the brand they have become what that is Richard Turin my friend Richard Turin is great Churchill and Turin travel but you don't know Churchill and Turin Turin travel so much you know Richard Turin okay that's a, a you know a brand is what he's become for himself this isn't necessarily about marketing but it's about what you want to be known for coming through here what are you selling is this is the second question what are you selling a lot of people tell me well Dan I, I sell cruises I'm a cruise specialist well you know that's not specific enough in this day and age, because there's a lot of people out there, just about everybody, 100,000 people are out there selling cruises. Well, no, I want to sell river cruises. Okay, that's great. River cruising is a, a really popular thing for people to do, and a lot of people are choosing river cruising. Okay, so you don't have 100,000, you got 75,000 people you're com competing with. Well, I want to specialize in European river cruising. Well, that's great. You, you got that down to about 50,000. You want to be very specific about what you're selling because this is how you get known for doing things. Okay. So if you were, if it, if it was me and I wanted to specialize in European river cruising, I would focus on the destination first. So I would focus on the regions around the Danube, the Rhine, the Rhone. Okay. Get to know them. Maybe, maybe go over and spend a couple of weeks and, and get into the local cafes and see, see what's really there outside of what the cruise lines try to, or the river cruise lines try to make you see on their, on their included tours, get to know the region, get very knowledgeable about that and experience what, what there is to do and see in those regions so that you become known as that des now destination. The, the brands are the ones that will take you there. Now, when I was in the business, I was very fortunate. And, you know, I had a good start because I worked on board ships for Royal Caribbean for almost six years. So I was a Royal Caribbean specialist. People would seek me out for that. You know, and, and so you want to have something, something that you become known for. It doesn't happen overnight, but it's good. The more specific you can be, the more successful you're going to be. That doesn't mean that that's all you sell. You'll sell other things. You'll sell Disney to their kids or to somebody else, but you want to be focused on a very specific destination or product so that people will seek you out for that. Who are your customers? Okay. Who, who is it that you want to do business with? Okay. You got the tire kickers. You got the people that call vacations to go or Costco and all of those kind of things. And you know what? You got a shot at those people because the reality of it is they're not looking for the lowest price. They want good value. They want you to be competitive, but they really want somebody who, who is going to get in there and tell them the best things to do, the places to go, the best cabin on the ship, what to do, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And if, for those of you who specialize in Disney, you know how complicated that is. Disney, if you're, if you're booking Disney, it's probably the most complicated uh, travel package that you can book because they have so much that you can add in. Okay, but if you're specializing in Disney, you become known as a Disney specialist. If somebody wants to try that, do that on their own, or they go to somebody who really don't know what they're doing, it's very quickly will that become evident that those people don't have a clue what's going on, and it gets frustrating for them if they try to book it direct. So you want to you want them to seek you out and put that all together. So what does your customer look like? Get a very vivid picture of who that person is. Okay, for Betty McLean travel, it might be these cyclists over here. For you know, some uh, Valerie Wilson, it might be the folks going on the river cruise. For some other one, you know, Disney specialist, it might be down there. So get a vivid picture in your mind of what that person is, what they look like, what they do for a living, uh, you know, what, how, where they like to travel. That needs to be who you're you're focused on getting. But the most important question that you have to ask yourself and be able to answer. I get asked this question all the time. And how do I communicate my value? Well, that's a good question. You know, you have to figure that out for yourself. But what you need to do is make yourself an indispensable part of their, their vacation package. You need to be as important as that air car hotel, uh, that uh, cruise, that tour, that every little component of that. They need to be able to think of, of you as part of that package where they wouldn't think about booking it anywhere else without the experience that you bring to the equation. So your experience, whether it's your travel experience, your cruise experience, wherever that is, you know, you want to make sure that you can highlight that your knowledge of the areas, the regions, the products that you're working with. Okay. Very, very important connections. 
Okay, connections are something that when you travel on FAMS, I have a, a gentleman that I have been coaching for the last six months or so, and one of the things that we do there, his specialty is is um, uh, romance vacation packages for all inclusives to Mexico and the Caribbean for busy professionals. Well, you know what? Busy professionals are kind of impressed with who you know. And so it's important that when you go to conferences, make sure you get your picture taken with those people, okay, with the vice presidents and with the, the anybody that's a representative of those companies. Be sure and take your, your name tag off so that it's not evident that that's where you made the connection at, but get your picture made with them so that you can post it on your website or, or in your emails and your newsletters and things like that and your marketing pieces that go out. Uh, get to know, you know, the hotel director, the, the chief pursers on the ships, the, ho the front desk managers in the hotels, the concierge, wherever you're going, make sure you make a connection with them. And, and when I say make a connection, it's not just, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Get their card, follow up with them on an email type thing so that they know who you are. You know, I'm on LinkedIn. I've got probably almost 6,000 people. And there's people that I have never met that I converse with on a fairly regular basis or look at my stuff. So I know who they are. So if they were to come to ask me for, you know, could you connect me to so-and-so here or whatever, I would be more than happy to do that. Because what happens is when you have connections, you also have access to perks because that gives you, you have a relationship with someone, it, you, you know, you're going to get your perks through your signature ensemble, uh, uh, VTG, whatever, or not VTG, but uh, travel leaders, whatever consortium host you're a member of, you get certain perks depending on what you book, but you'll have a direct connection to that hotel or cruise ship or whatever it is. And you can say, Hey, you know what? I've got some great clients that are coming on board. Is there anything that you can do? I'll be willing to pay. Make sure you say that because you may have to, but as long as they know you're willing to pay and you're not abusing the relationship, hey, you know what? More than likely, they're going to do something for you. It might be as simple as a, as a, as a you know, plate of chocolates or, or, uh, or a bottle of wine or something like that, or it could be something like a bridge tour or, or, some, or you know, come in and go up into an exclusive floor in the hotel, upgrades and stuff like that. Getting to know people is important. Now, I put anticipation. Anticipation means you, you know, why should they buy from you? You anticipate their needs. Uh, world cruisers uh, or people that are going to certain parts of the, the area that you know they're going to have to have vaccinations or they're going to need uh, visas. You're on top of that. You're doing that for them. OK, you can do just about everything and all they got to do is sign their name and put it in the mail and, and they get their visas kind of thing. So you want to anticipate what it is that they need. You want to inform them that that's what they need and anything, you know, even even on uh, stuff. Let's say it's a Disney trip, you know. OK, so when you get off, what's going to happen? I'm going to arrange a, a car to take you to your hotel, you know, things like that. You you anticipate and, and put it out there. Most people are willing to pay for stuff like this. OK, they just don't know that they need it. So if you include it and anticipate their needs on that, then they're going to be more than uh, happy to pay. So why sh you need to ask that question, though. Why should they buy from you versus 100,000 other travel professionals out there? Remember, we all have access to basically the same product uh, at the same price, very similar price. So why should they buy from you? Why? You know what? Valerie Wilson has made it very clear why you should buy access to you know, to benefits, access to perks, access to, to people. She's very well connected and made a point of doing that throughout their entire career. Um, you know, uh, Marianne Ramsey at uh, Betty McLean Travel. Why? She's connected. You know, the, the safari packages, the high end cruise packages. She's connected to a lot of people that can help. And that's why a lot of these folks make it into those travel and leisure lists of best agents uh, is because they know why people should be buying from them. So ask yourself that same question. All right. So 30 days sales success. It's 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 easy. I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's it, you can do it and you don't have to do a lot of marketing and stuff like that. So remember, the role of marketing is not to produce sales. That's not what marketing does. Marketing produces or should be producing prospects or leads for you. So picture that funnel coming in from the left. You've got your marketing that's out there that's done by either yourself or by your, your consortium, your newsletter, whatever it is that you got out there. The purpose of that is to, is to drive phone calls, emails, leads that come into you. Okay. The other on the right hand side is the proactive side. Okay. This is, this is for you to actually create those leads. 
Okay. And, and this is how you get 30 days sales success. And this is why people are, are, are not, um, getting any sales in six months or so is because they're not, not, not being proactive about it. They basically say, okay. And again, we'll go back to the host or the consortia that they may have promised that and said, our marketing will take care of everything. And this is what it does. But the reality of it is it's not. And you figure that out pretty quick. But if you get a sale in first 30 days or from 30 days from today, whether you've been in the business or not for a while, you're going to start building momentum. And if you do this proactively, uh, you're going to be very successful. So this is this is kind of the way it works. You're going to measure three things, leads, quotes and sales. OK, that's your that's your measurement. Let's go back to the ship, SHIP. What are your performance metrics you're going to measure? Leads, quotes and sales. Typically for every 10 leads, you're going to do five or six quotes and get three or four sales out of that, depending on how good you are. Okay. And I'm going to go through a sales process for you here in a minute. Okay. So we talk about dynamic referrals. Okay. When we're talking about how do you achieve sales success, we all know people. We all have our circle of influence. This is based on a, a, a study uh, by Mark Granovetter. It's called the strength of weak ties. And we've all had instances where, and if you haven't, you will, where we've had close family and friends come up to us and say, you know, we want to take a trip and, you know, could you, could you help us out here? And of course you do all this research and you get all the pricing, you get everything for them and you give it to them and you don't hear from them again. Dead silence. OK, so you reach out to them a month later, or a couple weeks later, or you hear through the grapevine, you know what? They went and they booked that with somebody else. Well, there's a reason for that. And there's a reason why the referral business is very important to you. A lot of people say, well, I get all my business from repeat and referral. Well, it's this is why. OK, people don't typically like to do business with people that they're close to. OK, they don't want to damage the relationship. They don't want to jeopardize that relationship that they have with you. So they're more comfortable going somewhere else and booking it with somebody that they, they don't really know well. And it's going to be more of a business relationship. And this is where I want you to start thinking, because I want, want you to start creating those leads and referrals by using your own personal circle of influence. And at any given time in our lives, we all have about 25 people at whatever stage of your life that you're in. So we're going to drop in here and I'm going to show you real quick a, a demo of how this works. So this is Brenda and Brenda's a travel professional. She's really excited. She's, she wants to make some sales. She's got a lot of knowledge. She knows what she wants. She's got her own people that she's close to. She's got her, her kids. She's got an older couple that's down the street. And, you know, again, she's got about 25 people or so that are around there. They each have their own circle of influence of friends and so on and so on and so on. And, you know, Brenda may have uh, met uh, the couple in the, you know, the second, third ones in for, at a barbecue or a Christmas party, but she doesn't know them. She doesn't have a close relationship with them and they have their own circles and so on and so on and so on. So statistically, this is who you want to go after. OK, the, the people who are close to you don't really want to buy from you because, you know, that's about 10 to 15 percent of your sales. But 65 to 70 percent or so of the people who will buy from you are people that barely know you. And that's who we want to reach. If we know that we want to make sure that we have a systematic process of, of getting to those people. So what we're doing with the people that are close to us in this, this first two is we're asking them for help. You know, if you if you remember, if you if you go to them and ask them, say, I'm in the travel business, well, you know, I want to book your next vacation. You know, they probably put up the, the cross like you're a vampire. But, you know, if you're asking them for help, people generally like to help someone else. So you ask them, who do you know? You know, I'm specializing in European river cruising in the, the Danube region. Who do you know that might be interested in taking a, a river cruise vacation like that? Well, you know, I know. Um, so-and-so, uh, Jim and Brenda over here, and they've got, her, her mom was talking about doing a river cruise. Great. Do you mind giving me some contact information so I can reach out and let her know that this is what I do. This is how I specialize and how can I help her plan her river vacation? Okay. It's, it's like that. Now that's, it's a little, there's more to it than that, but that's basically how it works. And so you get to that second and third level of people that you're not close to that are going to be comfortable buying from you. Now, are you going to get them all? No, but it's called prospecting. But, and this is warm prospecting because when you introduce yourself to them, you're going to say, Hey, you know what? I was talking to my son. Uh, and he had mentioned that, um, your son had said that uh, you were looking to take a river cruise next year. And I can, I'd be happy to help you with that. 
Okay, that's a warm cruise. That's because you're going through people that we all know and are connected to. So it creates that that bond there and that warm introduction and the credibility actually more than anything else that they'll want to talk to you on that. Okay, so 10 to 15 percent in the first level, 65 to 70 percent, and then it drops off exponentially after that. So we don't worry about the ones all the way on the on the right. We want to worry about that second and third level and getting to there. And that's how it works. OK. And, you know, I've got programs that, that go through this in a lot more detail. But this is generally this is how you're going to do your your dynamic referrals is what we call prospecting. And this is how you get to 30 days sales success is being proactive and not just emailing these people, but picking up the phone and calling them. OK, picking up the phone. They, people don't get a lot of phone calls these days. They do answer their phone and they do listen to their voicemail. So use the phone as much as you can. And that will differentiate yourself from a lot of people too. But if you, you get them via email and also via phone, then you've got two, two uh, ways of, of prospecting to them. Make sense? Awesome. So let's get on to the next one. So I promised you that if you, I'm going to teach you how to putt for, putt, uh, drive for show, putt for, for dough. Okay. Driving for show is your marketing. That's what gets you, you know, you're standing up on the tee box. If you're familiar with golf, I'm not a big golfer, but I, I like the analogy. You get up there and somebody crushes the ball off the tee. It sails on out there and it could be in the rough. It could be in the middle, whatever. You know, everybody's clapping because you did a great job of doing it. Well, the fact is you, it, you don't get paid until you put the put the ball in the hole. So the putting part, you know, putting for dough is where you get paid. That's the selling part of it. The marketing part is driving, you know, hitting it up, getting it onto the green. That's getting your prospect close. OK putting it, putting in the dough, putting it in the hole is how golfers get paid. That's how they win tournaments. And that's how you win sales. So let's talk about what I call the wealthy travel agent sales process. This is a process that I used in my business. I've used in, you know, a number of other things. I've been teaching this to thousands of people throughout, you know, the last 20 years or so, uh, whether I've been in, in corporate roles or my, you know, as a mentor or as a business coach is what I do right now. But you follow a process. Now, the thing about the process is, when you see it, it's going to be very intimidating. It's going to look like, you know what, there's a lot of steps here and this is going to take a long time. But the more you do it, the more practice you get, the better you're going to get at it and the questions that you have to ask. So most people, when you start out, you're probably spending an hour, hour and a half with a prospect. OK, if you follow this process and you practice it, I, it's, it's about 40, 45 minutes. You get all the information you need and you get, get where you're, you're going. And then that allows you to free up time. Because when you get paid on commission, the more time you spend, it dilutes how much you actually make off of. So the first thing you want to do is establish rapport. Now, this is through email, through phone, through whatever. And there's basically what it gets down to is finding something in common. You can talk about the weather. You know, I was, I was, I was uh, telling Lee this morning, you know, we've had big windstorms coming through. Oh, you know what? We've had those too. We got those coming. So that creates a commonality right there. You know, talking about whether it's talking about the weather, talking about the kids doesn't matter. If you got somebody sitting in front of you, well, you can mirror their their behavior or you can set your own behaviors and which will create cues for them to follow your lead. Same thing with verbal. You know, you can get verbal, you know, talk to somebody and it depends on the tone. You know, if they're like, oh, you know, I'm just really not, you know, I want to book this trip to go to Europe. You say, you know, that's great. I'm really excited for you. What is it that you're excited about? Well, you know, I think I'm really excited about seeing, you know, just seeing the castles along the Danube. And then so you bring them back up. And so that get, helps you get control of the conversation there. And again, this is I mean, this is a detail, get more detail later on. But in uh, in some programs, I'll tell you about. But creating that commonality is key. Qualifying, interviewing, however you want to call it. But you got to ask the right questions and go beyond, you know, the who, what, now, why, where and when questions, because you got to get those. But ask them how they want to feel on their vacation. You know, people don't buy typically on price. They they buy. They're not rational buyers per se. They want to go on vacation to feel a certain way or to see certain things. So you want to do that to help connect emotionally. Okay. How do you want to feel? Do you want your butt in the, you know, butt in the sand, toes in the water, butt in the sand kind of thing? You know, how does that make you feel when you do that? Okay. And take them to that level because nobody else is going to do that. Okay. You want to do that and that'll help when you're presenting the options that you have. So based on what you've learned and the research and present some options to them. Okay. How many, I'm going to ask this question. I want you to type it in if you can. How many options should you actually present to a, to a, a prospect or a client? I'm going to give you a minute to do that. And uh, Lee, if you want to 
read that yeah, back to me? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, the, the answers are coming in, and it looks to me like the most common answer is three. There mm-hmm. are a handful of people, one to two, but it looks to me like three is where most people are settling, no more than three. Yeah, so if you present more than three options, you're, you, they're not going to buy from you, period. You've, you've confused them. So the answer to the question is, is for those people who said one, you're the winner. Ding, 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 ding. You won. <clears throat> because based on what you learned the, and the research you've done, you should only present them with one single option. Okay. Based on what you've learned. Now, that said, you want to have one or two in your back pocket to pull out just in case. But the one you present to them is based, and you say this, you know, based on, you know, the information you shared with me, what I know about you, all that kind of stuff, this is what I feel is your best option. Remember, they're coming to you because you're a professional. They want your opinion. They they want you to put them in the best product in the best place at the best time. You know, don't make them choose. You know, they want you to make that decision for them. And believe it or not, that's that's what they really want. They may have done some research on where they want to go and that kind of stuff, but they want you to tell them what, what the best thing is for them to do. So present them with one. And then if you need to, you can pull the others out of your back pocket. And then when you, after you finish presenting it to them say, well, great. So Mrs. Jones, what credit card would you like to put that on? And have some dead silence there until they respond, let them respond. Don't say anything. When you ask for the credit card, you know, don't say, would you like for me to hold an option on this or, you know, that kind of thing. No. Which credit card would you like to put this on? OK, there you go. Or I've got seven days to hold this for you. Uh uh-uh, uh. Uh-uh. You don't give them the longer the time frame you give them to make a decision, the more likely they are to book it somewhere else or direct. And that's the last thing we want them to do. So ask for the credit card right away. Answer any questions they have. You know, we call this answering objections, but the reality of it is they're just, they don't have enough information. So they're asking questions. And so you want to be prepared to answer any questions if, or question, you know, an objection may be that it, the price is too high. Well, I'm sorry, based on what you, you shared with me and the type of experience, this is where it is. Now, I, I'm more than happy to research some or, or present you with an option that's less expensive, but you know, you're going to have to probably give up something that you want to have on this vacation. And the reality of it is you can never spend too much. You can always spend too little. So you want to kind of position it like that. And then you want to repeat uh, steps four and five until you either get a yes or you get a hard no. Okay. And it's not always right there at that time because follow up, follow up is the key. You know, rarely does somebody pop in and buy something right away. It usually they're going to say, well, I need to check with a spouse or my dog or somebody else like that. And then you want to be able to follow up with them on that. So when you follow up, it's important that you do it, have a systematic process. You want to be personal. Okay. You want to, Hey, hi, this is Dan. You know, remember me from ABC travel, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, You want to be relevant. You know, I'm calling about the vacation package we talked about the other day. You want to entice them. Okay. You know, the, there's very limited availability on this. Um, you know, it's best that we jump on this now. What credit card would you like to put that on? Boom. Okay. And if they say, you know, here's my American Express. Great. You're ready to go. Uh, if not, <clears throat> you, fo- you do the follow up process again until you get an absolutely hard no. So here's some statistics that are very important to look at here. 2% of the sales are made on the first. Well, basically, if you look at it, uh, 20% are made uh, before the fourth contact, 80% are from the fifth to 12th. And I can share with you this. Uh, it's more like towards the eighth to 10th is where the bulk of these sales come from. You know, it's follow up. It's getting to know them. And contact means, you know, from the first contact, they, they reach out to you or you reach out to them. That's the first contact. Second contact is, you know, vice versa and back and forth and back and forth. So you need to have probably at least six or eight uh, of those, you know, building that relationship with them when people actually buy. Now, here's the here's the more, more important statistics is down below. Forty eight percent never follow up with the prospect. You know, uh, in my time as an agency owner and my time as a, in the corporate side of it, uh, that statistic, in my opinion, is probably low for, in fact, all three of these are probably low for the travel industry. 
uh, you know, 25% of the salespeople con you know, are after the second contact, 12 after the third or more. Okay. So the follow-up that most people have is, you know, okay, great. You know, I need, need to check with your husband is you then call them up a day or two later and say, Hey, I'm just checking with you to see if you and your husband decided you want to go on the, the vacation. Um, you know, and they say, oh, no, we're still talking about, it. okay, great. Um, just give me a call when you're ready. You give me a call. So that's putting it on them. Okay. Your job is the one to make the sale. So you have to be proactive and say, okay, great. I'll reach out to you tomorrow or the next day and see where you are in the process kind of thing. Okay. So you, it's not their responsibility to buy from you. It's your responsibility to make sure that they're buying the vacation package from you that they want. Okay. So we talk about uh, what do you do with your time? So one of my corporate clients, I actually did this uh, for them and this is how you, as a, as a salesperson, as a sales focused leader, you want to, to focus your time on high value sales activity. Okay. And roughly 68% of your time. So close to 70% of your time is focused on what you need to do to, to generate and make sales. Okay. So you want to spend time on your leads, quotes, and sales. Okay. You could combine those together. That could be, you know, from a timing standpoint, could kind of go together. Follow up is the biggest one at almost at 19% of the time because it takes time to follow up. Servicing your new clients. So when they say yes, you've got some things you've got to do, whether it's, you know, getting the credit card put in, follow, you know, getting everything confirmed, putting in the folder and putting it away. Okay. Servicing existing clients, you want to do as little of that between the time that they booked and the time that they leave. And simply because every time you touch a booking, every time you, you open it up, it costs you money. OK, yes, it's a service thing. Yes, you can do that. And that's great. But every t just know that every time you touch it, you're, you're, it's costing you money because you're spending more time on that rather than bringing in new business. So, <clears throat> but there are things you have to do, like when documents come in and preparing all that. So you do that later. And then other stuff could be marketing or, or lunch or whatever you wanted, you know, uh, other presentations and stuff. And this is based on 40 hour work week. But the reality of it is you need to, as a salesperson, and if you want to make sales in your first 30 days or 30 days from now, you want to focus on the, the activities that generate those sales. And that's, providing those leads quotes and you know your marketing is providing some leads i can almost bet that you know it's if you wouldn't be on here if it's providing as much to keep you busy full time no it's not it's providing you with leads then you have to qualify those leads before you can even pump them into the process there whereas the proactive part the dynamic referral where you're asking the people close to you for referrals to people who who would be interested in traveling in the way that you want to sell it. Okay, that's going to take some time and that's going to generate probably more qualified hot leads for you to work going through. OK, so, you know, if you've got 25, 30 people that you're close to, I, I and if you actually reach out to them and ask, I guarantee you, well, I shouldn't guarantee anything, but uh, you will probably get at least 10 solid leads out of that that you can work. Will they buy today? Maybe not. It might be for next year or the year after, but you know, you've got some solid leads that you're working in there. Okay. So 30 days to sales success. First thing you got to do is get your ship together. You know, the thing that was most evident to me about the people who were responding to that Facebook post and the person who posted it is they didn't have the skill sets. They didn't have the habits. They weren't doing the things that you need to do to be successful. OK, if you're doing the right things that the, you know, you're going to sell, it's just going to it's just going to happen. OK, but remember, selling is where you make the money. It's not marketing. Marketing drives prospects in. You need to answer the four key questions for yourself, not for somebody else. What is your personal brand? What do you stand for? Mine is I'm Dan Chappelle. I'm the wealthy travel agent. That's my personal brand. I teach folks based on my experience how to achieve sales success. That's what I do. What do you do? Answering those four questions. What's your brand all about? What are you selling? Zero in on the products that you're selling. Be more specific. Doesn't mean you can't sell it, the other stuff, but you want to specialize in certain areas. Who are your customers? Okay. Who are your customers there that you have? Those are important that you know who you're actually going after and you want to do business with. It helps cut down on the tire kickers as well. But the most important question, why should they buy from you versus the other 100,000 travel professionals in North America? Why? And that's just here. There's a lot more all over the world. If you go to Australia and Europe, you're going to find storefront travel agencies still all, almost on every corner. Okay. Here, 
we work from home primarily. So, you know, there's a, a lot of different ways people can find a lot more people that way. So answer those four questions. What do you want to be known for? If, in fact, if I was to, to do this, I would say, what do I want to be? I want to be in the, the Condé Nast list, or I want to be on Wendy Perrin's list as a top travel advisor, okay, specializing in X, Y, Z. Okay, what do I have to do to get there? That should be your goal, because that's what what you want to be known for. That's that's that really you get on those lists, man. That drives some a lot of business in. So fill in your sales funnel with qualified leads. Okay, don't focus on the tire kickers. Remember, marketing's job is to generate prospects into your sales funnel. You are proactive going out and getting dynamic referrals. Okay. You're asking people who know other people. So it's a warm lead. It's not, it's not like, or, and you may even know some of these people you're reaching out to just very, very, very vaguely there and following a systematic sales process. Again, you want to follow that process because that helps you control the conversation, helps you control, you know, the, the selling process as you go through it. It also helps you cut down the time that it takes that you're actually doing this because you have specific things that you're asking and you're doing and you're able to do it in a shorter amount of time. And practice, it can take two hours the first time, get it, you know, your goal be get it down to 45 minutes. You may not get there, it may be an hour, but your goal is to maximize your time that you're spending with them. And then spending time on the high sales activities, high value sales activities. You know, Facebook is not a high value sales activity. Re picking up the phone and calling prospects is a high value sales activity. Generating quotes, getting the leads. I think the biggest issue that most of us have is generating leads. Well, if you're proactive about doing that, reaching out to people you already know, you're gonna have prospects right away. So people are starting to take notice of, of the SHIP program. Uh, in fact, a couple months ago, Vicki Freed basically dedicated a whole week of her daily tips to the SHIP process, uh, which I'm very grateful for because it just shows that it works and people are, people are taking notice and that it's out there, you know, showing off your skills, your habits, your why for your inspiration and your performance, tracking your performance. You know, this is, this is, this is key to your success in sales is being ready to actually make those calls and send out that stuff and getting your ship together is key. Uh, Mark has uh, been working with him for a few months. I mean, he loves the path that he's on. He's, it's helped get, and he's a virtuoso agent. He's been able to get his head in the right place to focus on who he wants to do business with and how to get there. It's incredible the results that's coming out of here. So how can we work together? You know, I can help you generate sales. That's what I do. I'm, I'm focused on sales. Well, the VIP uh, Power Players Club is a monthly membership. It's 99 bucks a month. You have access to, uh, I'm gonna show you the program here in a second, but you have access to a full course that I used to sell for $2,000. It's part of that, your monthly fee on that. You can cancel it anytime. It's month to month, so no big deal on that. Uh, also, a lot of other stuff, to how to maximize your insurance sales. There's a lot of stuff in there. Most of my good stuff is, is in there that you have access to as part of the Power Players Club. We're starting a uh, mastermind group. You know, if, if you join the Power Players Club, you'll have access to that. OK, uh, we want uh, we want to get people together that, you know, the best information, the best coaching actually comes from your, your peers. So you want to do that. Uh, the ship learning system. I'll t tell you about that. That's the personal sales coaching. And then our flagship program is Secrets of Selling to the Affluent Traveler. Uh, I open that up for, for uh, registrations in the spring and in the fall. Uh, I'm considering doing it for the end of the year because all of this is tax deductible because it's uh, it's a learning thing. So uh, people have asked me about that. And if you're interested, send me an email direct to dan at danchappelle.com uh, if, if you're interested in joining uh, that program, making it available now. So sale, ship sales coaching, how can we work together there? Well, working one-on-one -on -one with me, we go through the ship evaluation. Uh, we go through the ship framework. You have access to the VIP club for the six months that you're in there. Um, so you'll get the whole SA6 framework. Each month we do two 30-minute accountability calls. We have action plans and you have unlimited access to me. Now, you know, go on the website, go to danchappelle.com, click on uh, the VIP or the, the ship learning if you're interested in personal sales coaching and we'll schedule a call, you know, to see if we can work together, see if it works for you. It may not, you know, we may not be compatible, but if we're not, I'm happy to refer you to some of my peers that are out there that, that you might uh, be a better fit with.
Okay. Because I'm very sales driven and I want to make sure that you stay on top of your goals there. The SA6 sales acceleration system that's included in the VIP program, it also helps you in the attraction portion. It has a in-depth step uh, about your personal branding, how to develop that. But it's based on the found. I'm all about the fundamentals. You have a solid foundation, which is getting your ship together. The attraction marketing marketing is really two pieces. It's attraction, retention, attraction and prospecting and selling. Today we talk specifically about prospecting and selling. Once you get them, you got to keep them and then you've got to set yourself up to scale for growth. And that's all included in that ninety nine dollars a month. Uh, each module is released every two weeks as part of that program. So I want to leave you with a thought here before we open it up to the questions. We got a few, we got about 10 minutes for that. To think is easy, to act is hard. Okay. It's easy to think that you can be, get out there and you can do this, but when it comes time to actually doing it, it's hard. And the hardest thing in the world is to act in accordance with your thinking. So getting your mind in the right place, which is, which is what Mark is doing, you know, making sure that the, the, the actions that he wants to take are in accordance to what he's thinking. Okay. And that's a proactive thing to be successful. You need to be proactive. It's your business, whether you work for somebody else or you're working on your own, it's your clientele. You think about that. You know, a lot of them are going to follow you wherever you go, just like hairdressers or realtors. They switch companies a lot because the person, you are the brand that they're working with. Okay. So that's, that's important. So get in your head in accordance with your actions. You will go so far in whatever it is that you choose to do. So with that, isn't it time for you to get your ship together? We're coming up on the holidays. We've got programs that are available. If you want, uh, they, remember they're tax deductible, check with your tax advisor on that. But we have programs that'll help key you up, tee you up and get you ready for wave season coming up. The book is available. If you'd like a personalized copy of this, you go to my website, danchappelle.com, click on ship the book. And then there's an option that you can purchase a personalized copy. Otherwise just go to amazon.com and look for get your ship together or Dan Chappelle. It'll come up and uh, you know, have yourself a, a great time for the holidays there. So with that, uh, Lee, let's open it up to questions, answers, and any comments anybody might have. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Dan. Uh, first of all, everybody, we are going to put the replay up on our website at travelresearchonline.com in the webinar section, so you will be able to review this information. So, Dan, this uh, let me ask you this question. Um, it came in several times. Travel agents are always concerned about not coming across too pushy. Any advice on how to balance not losing the sale because you didn't ask for it, but also not losing the client who finds this approach too aggressive? Well, it's it's all in how you do it. Um, you know, if you're if you're reaching out saying, you know, I need to I need an answer from you today. I need you to do this now. Uh, that's not going to work. But hey, you know what? Uh, remember, they reached out to you or they've asked you to do something for you if you made the initial contact. So following up is fine. OK, a lot of them will thank you because life gets in the way. But, you know, you're you remember you're going to get the sale after you know, eight or 10 times touching them. So the, I, I guess the best way to answer this question is just be, be nice about the way you're following up. You know, Hey, you know, don't say, I don't want to bother you. Just say, Hey, you know what? I'm following up with you. I want to check with you on the package that we talked about last week. Um, you know, there's limited availability, blah, blah, blah. You know, you just do that and you keep doing it until they say no, or they booked it somewhere else, or they stop answering your emails or calls. People don't answer email. Email is very, whoops. Email, email is very easy to ignore. That's why I advocate using the telephone. Uh, but if you if you can get their number, but uh, you know, just keep doing it. You know, yeah, you may lose clients. You know what? They're not your clients. They're your prospects. Okay. If if you're following up with them until they buy, it, they they don't become a client. And this is part of the the lexicon in the industry as well. You know, everybody is a prospect until they buy something from you. Okay. Everybody is a prospect. They're not a client. A client is someone who you're actually working with and is paying you. Okay. So it's okay to keep following up. You're not going to lose them. You know, if they don't buy from you, they're just not going to buy from you. But if you don't follow up, then your, your, your chances of getting them are, are going to be slim to none. So just be casual about it. Be nice about it. You know, people, but, and people do appreciate it because life does get in the way. 
I hope that answers well, the question. It, it sure did. And it actually answered my next one, which was how many times should you follow up? And it sounds to me like you just keep following up until you hear no or yeah. they quit communicating. Yeah, the, pro the problem is most folks and, you know, I've done it and people that I've worked with have done it. And I see it all the time is it's they make that one call, you know, and I'm just calling to check, see what, you know, if your husband and, and, and or your spouse or whatever, have y'all made a decision on the trip we talked about yesterday or the day before, um, you know, give me a call when you're ready to book. OK, mm -hmm. give me a call when you're ready to book, puts it on them. <clears throat> that's not that's not how you're going to get business. I'll call you, you know, no, we haven't made a decision. I'll, I'll call you tomorrow. I'll check in, check in with you tomorrow and see where you are with this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most people are afraid to say no. So you may have to call them a few times, but the fact is, even if they say no, they may buy from you later. Sometime down the road, they may not just be ready, but they know that you're establishing a relationship with them with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good advice. Thank you. What do you think about uh, offering gift cards for recur referrals? I don't like it. Um, here's the here's the reason why. If uh, when people you're asking someone to help you, they do it out of the kindness of their heart and because they want to want to help you. Uh, they don't do it because you're going to give them a gift card to Starbucks or something like that. Uh, and there's studies that have that have have traced that, and and and, and it's not effective. Uh, if you want to, that's your your business, but it's you know it's an expense out of your pocket. I'm a big believer. Yeah, you got to spend money to make money, but you don't have you know don't spend it where you don't have to. And I think that's one of those I don't have tos. Now after the fact, if someone gave you a great referral and you want to give them something, sure. You know what? Hey, you know what? I want to just send give you a you know a, a cup of coffee as a as a thank you. OK, they don't look at it to, to, to someone who's made the referral, a five dollar gift card or a twenty dollar gift card. It's the same thing. They don't they don't there's no they don't look at the value of it. So, you know, just say, hey, you know what? Here's a here's a cup of coffee at Starbucks or, or Tully's or whatever it is that you have. Preferably you give it to somebody local. So you're supporting local businesses if you can. But that that's what I would do. You know, and again, studies studies support my view on that. I'm not a big believer in giving gifts to people on board ships and anything else too. So that that's a different conversation. <laughs> oh, okay. So now we know what we talk about next time. <laughs> um, okay, last, last question for you and then I'll let you wrap it up. What would you say this same sales process would work for B2B sales for like corporate travel? Yes. Yeah. Because you need to, you, you, you have to go in, you have to find out what their needs are. Um, you know, specifically corporate travel, even more so. Uh, this is not a sales process that's unique to, to travel. I, I've learned it from, uh, you know, when I was in the real estate business uh, and when I was selling books door to door. I mean, that, that really is the foundation of my sales background and why I'm so focused on selling because you make the money. So you can follow this process. You know, you, can you tweak it? Absolutely. Tweak it as you need it, but the same, but the basics of the process are still there. You know, if you're you're, you're going to have to reach out and uh, to a prospect, you need to find out, interview them, find out what their needs are. You know, are, why aren't they? Are they happy with the business that they're working with the travel agency that's handling their business now? If not, you know, okay, what what is it they don't like? What is it they do like? Make sure you get both, because everything's not always bad. Uh, and you know, and then go from there and try and put together a program that addresses all of their needs and then some. Uh, for and then present it to them and then just go through the process knowing that corporate is going to be a longer process because it has to go through a lot of other levels versus leisure travel. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, this has been just so eye-opening and there are so many positive comments that of course I'll, I'll send over to you after the webinar, Dan. Um, Thank you. But I'll stop with the Q&A now and turn it back over to you so that you can share some closing comments with us. Great. Well, again, I want to thank everybody for coming today, uh, you know, based on what I'm seeing and nobody really left. So <laughs> it's obviously that the, the subject was good to bring up. Um, you know, I, I think if you if I leave you with one final thought is don't be obsessed with your marketing. Your marketing purpose, as I've said, it's to help drive prospects in. If you want to obsess on something, I want you to be obsessed with the proactive part of reaching out for referrals. 
whether it's to existing clients. This is where most people fail is, is in there. If you've been around, you've got a few clients, they don't, you know, they're happy with you. You know, happy clients can refer you to other people that'll, that'll help do business with you because they tend to run in the same circles. So you can get that kind of whatever it is you're specializing in. So focus on being proactive. You want to sell something, you want to do it in 30 days, 60, I don't care what your time frame is, but it's not going to, if you want to sit back in your rocking chair and wait for it to come to you, you know, cobwebs are going to grow there. Okay. Simple as that. You're, you're just going to, and you're going to get whatever comes along with whether it's who you're looking for or not. You might get lucky and find somebody who books with you just because they didn't call VTG or somebody else. But if you give them a compelling reason to book with you and you're proactive about that, man, you can build a great business, a great solid business with doing minimal marketing. You know, you want to participate in what you're hosting, what you're your uh, folks are doing. That's their job. Their job is to provide support materials for you and your business. Okay. As I said, whether you're an employee somewhere or whether you got your own thing, that's what they're there for. They're not there to sell anything there for you. They're not there to hold your hand through all of this, although they do have some training stuff that, that's available to you. Um, I, I'm a believer that I think outside you need to balance that out with outside resources. That's why I, you know, I, I do personal coaching. I have online programs that, you know, I'm somebody who's done it. You know, there are people out there who, you know, particularly at a lot of these organizations, they have strong marketing backgrounds, but they don't have sales backgrounds and selling, you know, selling the product is really, you know, that's where it's at. That's how you get paid. That's where, that's where the ball goes into the cup. So whether it's me or someone else who's focused on generating revenue for you through sales, marketing generates the prospects, selling generates the sales, more than happy to help you. Just go to danchappelle.com. You'll see, scroll down a little bit. You'll see the three three things you can click on one of them or you can just send me an email at dan at dan chappelle.com dan at dan chappelle.com that's my brand that's my personal brand who i am okay send me an email with your questions your comments um happy to work with you in a lot of ways if you're interested in the affluent program uh, i'm going to open that up probably on an individual basis not put it out for everyone so reach out to me directly on that but thank you so much wave season's coming up I hope you embrace this and get ready to just really generate uh, and ramp up your sales process and get ready for wave season when it comes in. With that, thank you so much. This has been a pleasure and an honor for me to, to share this information with you. So thank you. Yes, Dan, thank you. And everyone, like I said, look for Dan's replay up on our website at travelresearchonline.com. I put Dan's email address right there in the question box area. You all should see that. And uh, we wish you all a good day and we'll conclude our webinar. Goodbye, everybody.